in any situation where any categorization is taking place or definitions are taking place or solidification of concepts is taking place, the best thing to do is to start with definitions. Let's start out defining what the heck does polyphony mean and what the heck does synthesizer mean? Because there's a, that is also a blurry topic. <laughs> Amazingly. Anyway, so polyphony. Now I'm going to justify this definition with the history that I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to start out telling you the term I'm going to use and the, the definition I'm going to use for that term. You will see in this whole process why I've come to the conclusion that this is what polyphony is and the same with synthesizer. So what is polyphony? Polyphony, okay, first of all, the term is not a new term. It was actually, it's actually a term that describes a compositional technique used in the Baroque era, uh, where basically overlapping melodies uh, define the compositional style of the music. And harmony is an accident, an accident of the intersection of overlapping melodies. And it's kind of where we got harmony as a concept, which is super cool, actually. It started off as layers layered atop each other. And then the resultant intersections of those melodies created harmonic uh, structures and also musical connection to harmony. Anyway, that polyphony has nothing to do with synthesizers. And I've seen people try to combine the two, even on Wikipedia, and it's, no, there's no connection between these two things. The only connection is that the definition of the word, if we break it apart into its roots, is the same. Uh, many voices, many sounds. But that's where the similarity disappears. Poly polyphony in regard to synthesizers is a different thing. It has nothing to do with the bar Baroque style. Okay, polyphony is when a synthesizer can make multiple sounds simultaneously. When it can do multiple notes or multiple voices simultaneously. That is polyphony. And in the definition I'm going to use, it's important to make the distinction that between notes and voices. Polyphony covers both notes and voices. It doesn't matter whether we're hearing a note or a voice. Uh, polyphony is when there's multiple iterations of either. And that's important. You might be saying, well, what's the difference between a note and a voice? A note is a single frequency and a voice in synthesizers is an architecture that includes articulation. How loud it is, how, for how long, how the timbre changes over time, how the frequency changes over time. These are issues of articulation. Voices have an articulation structure surrounding them, whereas notes do not. And that's gonna become really important when we start talking about paraphonic. Okay, but polyphony is just multiple notes playing at one time. That's all it is. And uh, I like to make the distinction that polyphony is more than two notes. And why? Because we came up with a word in the very late 60s, early 70s, that is duophonic, which meant, which uh, is two notes or voices playing at the same time. So duophonic is two. We already have a word that defines duophonic. And we needed one because the first synthesizers that could play multiple notes at the same time basically played two notes at a time. That's where the term duophonic came from. Uh, we could get rid of it and just say it's all polyphony, but why not hold on to it? It's definitive. It's descriptive. If you say a synth is duophonic, you know exactly what it means. If you say a synth is polyphonic, it could mean any number of things. So it's kind of a useful term. Polyphonic is more than two notes. If a synthesizer plays more than two notes, it's a polyphonic synthesizer. That's all there is to it. Now, I know a lot of you right now are going, but wait, what about articulation? I mean, you know, what about, you know, paraphonic? Well, we will get to that in great detail later on in the series. But for now, I'm just telling you that that is what I'm gonna be talking about when I talk about a polyphonic synthesizer. Now, the other question, what is a synthesizer? <laughs> oh boy. Now, I know a lot of people would, will disagree with my definition of the synthesizer, and that's fine. 
and you know I'm willing to enter into any sort of discussion about why I've chosen this definition. In fact, I'm about to tell you why I've chosen this definition. But you know, it's not it's not an open and shut case. It's just a very complex application of a single term that I think we need to both narrow and solidify. So here's my definition. After studying electronic instruments from their inception all the way up to today, after uh, making the goal of my life to play them, understand them, research them, uh, I've come to this conclusion about what is the best definition for a synthesizer. Because certainly we have lots of different electronic instruments, lots of different instruments that make interesting sounds, etc., etc., etc. And of course, the confusion between synthesizing something like synthesizing rayon, a synthetic substance, and synthesis as in bringing components together to make a whole in regard to the synthesizer. And this is, this is a confusing, these two usages, one certainly predates the other, uh, make it really confusing for people to understand what synthesis is, what it's meant to do, and what, what it is. So, if we examine all of the devices that have been called synthesizer over the many years that the term's been used, basically it was coined in about 1955 to describe one particular device. If we examine how that word has been used from 1955, I know some of you are probably saying, no, the RCA was 1957, but the RCA Mark I was 1955. So that's why. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, yeah, I'm going for RCA Mark I. Anyway, 1955, the term was used a number of times before it became solidified after Bob Moog started using it. But if you look at the three devices that are the uh, seminal synthesizer named devices, they're all quite different with different structures, different intents, similar intents, similar structures, but different. And then the things that we call synthesizers today are vastly different, really sometimes, even than those. So it gets very, very confusing. But if we look at all of the different instruments called synthesizer, we can see certain trends that overlap. Number one, they are electronic. Number two, they are designed to allow the user to author timbre which is to say it's an instrument that allows the user to create the timbre that the device will be able to make. And that is what makes it a singular device. That is what defines it from other devices. Other electronic instruments, organs, the Mellotron, even the theremin, their goal and intent is not to author timbre, but to generate timbre, the difference between generate and author. The synthesizer is a device where your intention is specifically to create sounds, not just by making them happen, but by actually designing them. And while there are many instruments that also do that, a pipe organ, for example, the special thing about the synthesizer is that it's electronic. And that is basically where we start our story of polyphony, the incredible revolution that took place when composers who desired new timbres intersected with engineers using the new magic electricity that could provide them with that possibility. But anyway, for me and for the purposes of this series, the series, a synthesizer is an electronic device that is used to author timbre.